What is up guys, my name is Ignas, welcome back to the channel. This week I've made a dividend comparison on three largest oil producers, and out of them ConocoPhillips got the most best metrics. So that is the reason that today we'll be taking a deeper look into this particular name. Even though the stock has been moving down recently, it is still higher in the year to date up for 14.08%. One year's performance is really awesome with the stock higher for 41.54% and if we zoom out even further to 5 years, the stock went from $43 in 2017, almost 2xing now in 2022 to $83.73, higher for 93.69%. So the stock is up by quite a lot in 5 years, though price turning still looks reasonable at 8.66. So in this video today we are taking a deeper look, first we'll check financials and fundamental ratios, then predictions from analysts for next year, after that what super investors and insiders are doing with the stock, and lastly we'll go through the technicals of the price chart. Let's see if this stock is worth adding into our portfolio, so let's start. So first let's take revenues and this is ConocoPhillips history of the last 5 years. Back in 2017 they were bringing in $27 billion on the trailing 12 months. Then in a year in 2018 that increased to $33.8 billion. Revenue peaked in 2019 at $39.8 billion. But then we saw it declining for 2 years. In 2020 it came in at $31.4 billion. That was an addition of $4.8 billion for the quarter. Down over 52% year over year. And then the trillion 12 months revenue bottomed in 2020 at $19.26 billion, again with the year over year quarter going lower for 26%. But that was when it started going green again. So in the third quarter of 2021, revenue came back to those previous highs to $38 billion. And then with the first quarter of this year in, they now have it at $57.1 billion. So far it does look really well, as recently each quarter has been higher than the last, but with price of oil going lower and the economy slowing, we could see these revenues turning around real quick. Now next metric I would like to check is price to earnings. So back in 2017 earnings were negative, so price to earnings at zero. Then in 2018 earnings finally went positive, so we saw the price to earnings ratio at 16.4. A year passed and in 2019, we saw earnings increasing and the price moving lower, so price to earnings at 8.88, then 2020 with the price still moving down, but earnings also now dropping, price to earnings went up to almost 20 at 19.08, then the next three quarters in the same year were negative, with price to earnings at zero, but then it again went positive in 2021, and we saw price to earnings peaking at 51.06. Now this year earnings are surging higher, and with price recently going down, we now have price earnings at reasonable levels again, now at 8.59. So the lowest price earnings we have seen was back in 2019, at 7.03, but then with the ratio being at under 9, we only had 3 other quarters, that was in 2019, 2020, and now we have it again in 2022. So we could say that we now have the price to earnings ratio at almost the lows of the last 5 years. Next metric is the number of shares outstanding. So in 2017 they were at 1.25 billion shares. In a year that went down to 1.19 billion, a decrease of 5.04% year over year. Then in 2019 another decrease to 1.15 billion, down for 3.29%. And in 2020 we saw the number at 1.09 billion shares, minus 5.41% year over year. But then we had this jump in 2021, with an increase of over 200 million shares to 1.3 billion, up over 20% year over year. And with the first quarter of 2020, it is pretty much the same at 1.31 billion shares. So it seems that in the last 5 years, ConocoPhillips not only didn't decrease on their number of shares outstanding, but actually managed to increase that number by over 50 million shares. Now let's take a look into the dividend yield. So in 2017 we saw the stock trading at a yield of 2.43%, then in a year with the price going up and the dividend payout increasing by just a bit, the yield went lower to 1.62%, 
In 2019, we saw the price coming lower a bit, so the yield went up to over 2% at 2.04, and then in 2020, with the price bottoming, the yield shoot up to the highs of 4.92%. But after those 2020 lows, the price started moving up quick, so by the end of 2021, we had it down to 2.33%, and this year to the lows of 2.1%. Now, recently, they did announce a large special dividend. So the trailing 12 months dividend yield is now shooting up to 3.56%. But the forward yield is still closer to that bottom we saw in the beginning of this year. So to further check into dividends, let's go to my stock watch list on Google Sheets. Here we are in my dividend stock watch list, and now we have opened the tab for COP. So this is here the stock's dividend yield history of the last 5 years, and out of this information we can calculate, that on average in 5 years, it was trading at a dividend yield of 2.58%. So the worst time to get into the stock was by the end of 2018, where we saw the dividend yield at 1.59%, under the 5-year average for 38.44%, and the best time was with the lows of 2020, where the stock was at a yield of 4.92%, over that same average for 90.49%. But if we take the forward dividend yield now at 2.24% and compare it to that 5-year average, it doesn't look very promising, as it is currently under that average for 13.27%. So not that great of an opportunity buying into the stock right now. Now if you would be interested in doing a similar analysis on a dividend paying stock for yourself, you are able to access this watch list by following the first link at the top of the description. Otherwise, feel free to add the ticker symbol in a comment below, and I'll consider adding it into my watch list here. Maybe you could share some interesting opportunities in the market that I'm still missing. So we have looked into the history, but how about expectations? Where do analysts think ConocoPhillips will be trading next year? So we have information on 26 price targets of analysts, and the targets range from the lows of $83.90 to the highs of $160 per share. The average out of it comes in at $125.46, and currently the stock is trading at $83.36. This means that on average, analysts suggest that next year, COP should be going up by 50.5%. Now let's take another angle. Here we have earnings per share estimates for next year, and out of 20 analysts' targets, it is expected that next year, ConocoPhillips will be bringing $12.45 in earnings per share. If we assume that next year the P.E. ratio remains the same, the analysts predict that for next year the stock price should be going down by 15.7%. So on one hand we could be expecting for the price to be going up, but on the other analysts predict that the company will be bringing less in earnings per share. Now next one is Super Investors. So currently we have two funds holding ConocoPhillips. One is Dodge & Cox. They haven't bought or sold recently but they are holding a sizable position of over 14,600,000 shares, which is valued at almost $1.5 billion and takes up 1.49% of their portfolio. And then second is Yachtman Asset Management, though they have reduced on their position by 0.19% and they still now have almost 270,000 shares, which is 0.24% of their portfolio. So overall, super investors are selling just a bit, but it seems to be a way different case with insiders. In the last 6 months they managed to make 0 buying transactions, but they did sell for 10 times, summing to a sale of over $102 million. So unfortunately insiders have only been selling. Now the last part we'll check is the price chart. So in the beginning of June the stock reached the highest of $124.08 per share, but after kept on stumbling lower. There it was going over all of the moving averages, relative strength index was over 70, and we still saw bullishness in the lines of the MACD. But then the stumble happened, in a few trading days the stock dropped to $110, relative strength index already closer to 50, and there was a bearish crossover in the lines of the MACD. There were no support on the 50 and the 100 day moving averages, we saw the drop slowing on the 200, with a price close to $88, relative strength index just over 30, but interesting to find that the distance between the lines of the MACD changed direction again. 
Unfortunately, on July 5th, the stock still dropped under the 200 day moving average, closing at around $84 per share. And with another week in, the price is still right there at just over $83. Relative strength index is just over 30 at 33.6. And we are now very close to having a bullish crossover in the lines of the MACD. Though the concern I still do have is that we haven't yet gotten any crossovers in the moving averages. And first one will be coming soon, with the 50 day going under the 100. So if that happens, the stock could falter further. And then we could see ourselves testing the support of the 300 day moving average. So we have looked through all the metrics. And now let's make a quick recap of what we found. Revenues has been going up from the bottom of 2020. But with the price of oil going lower, that may not be lasting that much. Since earnings have been going up recently, and the stock price is tumbling lower for the last month, we now have the price earnings ratio almost at the lowest it has been in the last 5 years. But looking into the number of shares outstanding, they haven't been buying back that much, and in 5 years they actually managed to increase that number by 50 million shares. Looking into the dividend, I can't find much opportunity there, as the stock is currently trading at a dividend yield that is 13.27% under the 5 year average. Now with analysts estimates, it is all over the place. As for the next year, they are predicting for the stock to move in the range from minus 15 to plus 50%. Super investors aren't bullish either, as overall they have been selling even though slightly, but at least in the last 6 months insiders have only been selling. On the other hand, there are some promising technicals. Relative strength index is down there close to 30. We are about to get a bullish crossover in the lines of the MACD. And even if the price still goes lower a bit, we could be testing the 300 day moving average as any kind of a support. But unfortunately with the price moving lower, the moving averages will begin crossing lower and we could soon be expecting the 50 going under the 100. So that was it, make sure to support the channel and leave a thumbs up under the video. So are you holding ConocoPhillips right now? Share your stance on the name or your position in it in a comment below. If you would be interested in getting access to my dividend investing watchlist, then consider memberships. By becoming a member you will get access to Discord, where I share all my Google Sheets documents and all the buys and sells exactly when I do them. This could be a great option to track my moves closely. Last week I have looked into several other companies, so if you would be interested in any of these, then click on a video that is currently on the screen. And that was it from my side, thank you for watching and I will be seeing y'all in the next one.